Hey guys, this is Bill with Blue Line Off-Road and today is maintenance day on the 4Runner. So stick around, we're going to be changing differential fluid, front and back, transfer case fluid, and we're going to change the oil too. So stick around, we'll show you how to do it. Okay, we're gonna start with the rear differential. Um, I'm interested in seeing what it looks like. It gets used more than any other, obviously for the front or the transfer case. So I'm interested in seeing what this looks like. Here is your fill plug right here. Here is your drain plug. Now, something pretty important, very important actually. You always want to remove the fill plug first before you remove the drain plug. Two reasons for that, one of which is you want to air to be able to come in this to helps it flow easier, more easily out of the drain plug. That's important. It helps to keep from the splatter down a little bit. Secondly, and this is really important, if for some reason you cannot get this off, for whatever reason you can't get the, the fill plug off, definitely do not take off the drain plug because then you're kind of screwed. So um, we're going to start with the the fill plug there. Right, like I said, see if I can get this fill plug off here there we go there we go actually wasn't that bad a little bit stuck i hadn't obviously taken it out before the forerunner has forty thousand miles on it so it is time now sometimes when you take these off you'll have a just a little bit of oil coming out through the top of the threads that's because when you fill this up, that is where you fill it to, near to the top of the threads. Um, I see uh, just a, it's wet in there. I see it right there at the edge, so we are good. All right, drain plug now. Let's see if I can get that one real quick. There we go. Once it breaks free, you can kind of hear it when it breaks free. That one was a little more. A little tougher now I'm interested in seeing what this looks like when it comes out like I said and one thing you don't want to do is take this drain plug out and just let it fall into the oil you don't want to do that because it is magnetized and it's gonna have some probably some residue if you want to call it that on the on the plug so you don't want to you want to you're gonna to have to want to inspect that residue so if you let this fall into the drain plug, then a lot of that residue might come off. So do this slowly and have it come. There you go. Perfect. Wow. Here it comes. And I have, I, I can see the plug. There is next to no residue on this, on this plug, which is very, very good. Like I said, you don't want residue on this. Um, well, if you do have some, it's probably going to be, like this very fine silty like material and that's fine that's what to be expected because this magnetic plug attracts the the debris that's created from normal wear and tear in your differential what you don't want are chunks big like slivers large slivers and, and chunks of metal that's not what you want in here you want just the very fine silty material um and that's what you want you can run it between your fingers and get the feel all right let's let this drain for a few minutes and we'll fill it back up Drain plug is back. Time to fill this up. Let's open up the first quart here. Now to fill this up, specs say this takes about three quarts. I think 2.9 exactly. So give or take three quarts. What you're going to do is, I'm trying to make a mess here, is get your oil poured in here one, at, one quart at a time. And then when you're on the third quart, you will notice when you get to the top, it will have um, a little bit will come out right there at the threads when it's about full and that is where you want it. When you get to that point where it's right at your threads and it's full, then give it one more quick squirt and 
you're full. I really like these bags here because as you can see, it is very easy to get all of the juice out of these bags. All right. Very easy. I remember the having the the olden days you had the uh, the jugs, you either had to get a hand pump or something. A uh, funnel maybe, but sometimes funnels weren't even practical just because of the way that things were laid out. But these bags really make it easy and you can really squeeze pretty much everything out of these out of these bags as you can see. So yep, that is going to be one quart. Let's get the next one. Alright, next quart. And I just exchange the same nozzle on each one that way I don't have to keep cutting the tip of it off. So just you got I mean, you gotta take it off to cut it anyway and to open up the new bag so it's just easier to go ahead and just use the same nozzle. Yeah, these, yeah, these bags are so much easier to use than Two quarts in. You should get the third one. All right, ready with the third one. What I'm going to do here, real quick, is clean this up. So when it starts to dribble, I want to be able to see it. Since I had a little residue on there, sometimes it makes it a little more difficult to see it. But now, clean it up a little bit, and you can see a little bit better when it starts to dribble out. And that way, you know it's full. It's going to take almost a full quart. So I'm going to go ahead and Squeeze a bunch of it in there, at least three quarters. Okay, let's let it sit for a second. We have a little bit left. That may actually be full. Looks like it's oozing out. We have a little bit left. We're gonna have not quite six quarts to use, so we've got a little bit, and I think it's probably full. Let's do one little quick squirt and see what happens. It is full. Here is the more quick squirt. Yep, it's full. Here is the fill plug. Back in. Again, give me all the trouble you, all the gripe you want for not using a new crush washer. We'll be fine. All right. Clean this up a little bit so I don't get oil all over my socket. Back with the torque wrench. Again, 36 foot pounds. And 36 is really not all that much. There we go. That was one. There you go. There you go. 36 foot pounds. Rear differential is done. Let's move up front toward, uh, let's do transfer case next. All right, folks, we are at your transfer case. And you can see here you have, that's the fill plug. And down here at bottom is the drain plug. Drain plug has like a metal shroud around it. Makes it more easy to identify. Plus, they're the, they're the biggest bolts on here. They're both 24 millimeter, just like was on the rear differential. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my torque wrench for this because you seem to get you get a little more leverage with it and there you go it comes off a little more easily the 3 8 inch it just doesn't seem like it has enough leverage to get that loose so there you go and you can see a little bit of the oil dribbling out that means it's right at the threads it's right out where it needed to be so perfect now let's get the drain plug off. I 
things should come out fairly easily too. Yep, perfect. clean these up a little bit like I said I drove this and warmed it up a little bit and even went through the four-wheel drive system tried to engage everything um, hopefully that it would not only warm things up a little bit but would suspend any particles that needed to come out it would suspend them in the fluid and uh, that's, that's probably a good idea for any fluid change including your oil change clean get them warmed up a little bit before you actually do the service. So let's let this drain for a few minutes and we'll be right back. All right, we are down to a drip, so I think we're good to go. Now real quick, if you're somebody who is intimidated by working on vehicles, don't be, don't be. I've been working on vehicles since before I could drive. So this is nothing for me. But if you can change your oil, if you've changed your oil in your vehicle and now you wanna think about doing a differential drain and fill and a transfer case drain and fill, please do it. It is a piece of cake. It is easier than changing your oil. There's no filter involved here. It is simply pulling plugs, draining, and filling up. And that's all it is. It is a piece of cake. So let's go ahead and get this drain plug back in. And y'all can get all upset with me again about the crush washers. I'm sure there'll be somebody who wants to leave a comment about a crush washer. Grab my torque wrench. Um, these go to 27 foot pounds. So not as tight as the back as the rear differential. But 27 foot pounds is not much at all. Yep, there we go. All right, let's get some fluid in this thing. All right, now this thing, like I said, the, this, uh, the transfer case only takes about a quart and a half. See what we got. a second it shouldn't take much of this so go gently on this one yep didn't take much of that at all let's give that a second make sure it settles inside the transfer case because there are a lot of areas in there where this fluid needs to get to so let's make sure it levels out first and I'll try to see if I can't get a tad more in there I think it might be full let's just give it a second to level out you don't want to get these things over full but you don't want to have them under full either I think this is full I'm gonna do one quick squirt here and see what happens yep this thing is full so let's let this drain for just a second so I don't want it to be over full and we'll stick the drain plug back in or the fill plug rather yep Good. Let's go ahead and get this plug back in. Back with a torque wrench. 27 foot pounds again. There we go. Done with the differential, done with the rear, uh, done with the rear differential, and done with the transfer case. Now we get to move forward to the front transfer case and the oil. All right, now we're in the front. Um, I have already taken off the the main skid pan in the front, but I didn't take off this second one yet, and I want to show you why. Um, normally, if you're changing the oil, let me move the camera here so I can show you that drain access door here. The drain plug for the oil pan is just under there and it takes off those two 
those two bolts. The problem is if I'm gonna do the transfer or the front differential rather, I need to take off this um, skid pan here. So just wanna make sure that you were clear on that. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get that done. This is a 12 millimeter in here. Across the garage floor. There's the other rolling across the garage floor. The other two are in the back. It's always fun because that's the one that allows it to drop on you. We can get that out of the way. That gives you access to your front differential right here. All right, front differential. This does not have drain plugs, 28 millimeter nuts. This has rather a 10 millimeter hex. So here is your fill plug way up top. Now, is there a lot of people out there who will get a aftermarket plug to make it so it's a bolt rather than a hex? I don't know. You can if you want to. All right, break that loose. I actually think that the hex actually fits in there a little more tightly than your socket does around the bolt head, but to each their own. If that's what they want to do. They're more than welcome to do it. I think Lexus, um, the Lexus version has an actual bolt head. All right, here's your fill plug. Um, I don't see any fluid. Let me see my finger in here sometimes. Yeah, it's a little bit wet on the tip of my finger, so it is full. Good to know. Glad Toyota decided to fill it from the factory. That's nice of them. All right, let's go ahead and drop this. Get the drain plug out. Oh, and that was a tough one. That one didn't want to. Come loose very easily. Alright. Again, don't let this drop in because you want to look at the, what's on the tip. There you go. You want to look at the shavings that are on the, um, the drain bolt just like you did at the rear. You want to see what condition the um, differential's in. Again, it's okay to have a little bit of silty-like substance on the on the end of the drain bolt. It is magnetized. Again, what you don't want are chunks or large slivers, things like that. And I can rub my finger through here, and this is what it looks like. You can see, and you rub your rub it together, and it just feels again this silty material. Not much of it at all. It's exactly what you're looking for. Exactly. No problems there. So we'll clean this bolt up, let this thing drain for a few minutes, and we will fill it up. Uh, this looks like we're down to a drip. So we can put this back in. I gotta be honest with you, um, both the front and rear differential fluid, both were cleaner than I expected them to be, especially the rear. The rear had had was fairly black, not black, but um, not as dark as I expected it to be. It's the front here, as a matter of fact, I didn't think it was bad at all. It's not, from a color perspective, not all that different than what's going to be going in. Um, and I use, I actually use this thing off-road, so, um, to have that fluid look as good as it did, I'm, I am happy with that. This 
drain bolt is 48 foot pounds. So I set my torque wrench. There we go. There we go. 48 foot pounds. Now, out of all the ones to get to, this is probably the most difficult. Not that it's hard, but it's going to be the most difficult because you just have so much stuff going on here in the front that there's just a lot of things in your way. That's probably, I had probably about three quarters of a quart left. That is done. Let's get the last quart. Okay, here is the rest. Again, it won't take very much more. Because this uses a little, I think, a little bit, it's less than two. I'm not sure how much. It's somewhere around a quarter, a quart and a half. This as well. Let's see. You might be there. Right, let's let this drain for a second and make sure we're full. Now we're down to a drip. Let's put a little bit more in there and see what happens. Yeah, we're definitely full. All right. Let that drain until the point stops. Now we're down to a drip. Now we can all right now this is 29 foot pounds let's go ahead and adjust my torque wrench there we go 29 foot-pounds um, on a half-inch drive torque wrench is not much at all. Yep, here we go. Yeah, 29 is not much. All right, let's get the rag out, clean these up. There are some cracks here. All right, front differential's done, transfer case is done, and rear differential done. Now it's time to change the oil. All right, folks, now we're all set to do the oil change now. Um, we got the rear differential done, the transfer case done, the front differential, now we're trying to do the oil. Now here's the drain plug for the oil, and if you remember the, uh, the skid plate, I had, the skid plate that I had had the access panel right here. If you were just changing oil, which is what you would be doing most of the time, all you would have to do is take off those two bolts that hold just that access panel. You could leave your um, entire skid plate intact. But right now, since we had to take that off to get to the trans to get to the front differential, we're going to go ahead and just leave it off for now and go ahead and get the um, oil drained out of here. If I can get this thing loose. Uh, for some reason, every time I do this, I always tighten this up too much. And every time I do it, I say, I'm not going to tighten it up as much the next time. But you know what I do? I tighten it up too much the next time. Now, when you do this, um, go ahead and just loosen your, your, uh, 
your fill up front, up top here, go ahead and loosen that up. It allows the oil to drain a little more freely. Oil's black. It's, I do this, I do oil changes about every 5,000 miles on this thing. I know the manual calls for 10. I've never in my life waited 10,000 miles for an oil change and I'm, I'm not about to start now. So every 5,000 miles. So let's let this drain for a few minutes and then we'll take the filter off. All right, looks like we're down to a drip. So let's go ahead, drain plug back in. Clean it up a little bit with the rag. Again, I don't like getting junk on my sockets. Torque settings for the drain plug are 30 foot-pounds. There we go. 30 foot-pounds. Clean it up a little bit more. All right. Now to the filter. All right. Now I have repositioned the camera to the other side here so you're able to better see the, the filter housing. And you can see there's a cap here that takes a three inch drive to remove that. Sometimes the whole housing comes with it. Most of the time it doesn't. Go ahead and take this off and it'll expose your first O-ring. See, there's a red O-ring here that kind of that fits up in there. Remember where that goes and you'll see it's red because I use the K&N filters which have the red O-rings. They're easier to see. The black ones, sometimes people, I've heard of stories, people actually forget to use or forget to remove the old O-rings because they just don't think about it because they're the same color as everything else up in there. So they forget to remove them. Then you get two O-rings. Now, this is the piece I mentioned earlier. There is still oil up in the housing here. So if you get this, it screws up into the same place where that cap was removed and allows the oil from the filter to drain through and, and I like these again I like the screw ones because they're able to seat fully up to the top and let as much oil out of the filter housing as possible so let's let that drain for a minute and get as much out oil out as we can to help reduce the amount of mess we make when we take off that filter housing okay this thing is still dripping a little bit but I am uh, I'm impatient so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this now I know I'll probably make more of a mess than I probably should, but like I said, I'm impatient. This always seems to take the most time is to drain the residential, the residual oil from the filter. That always seems to take most time. So clean this up a little bit because now you have to use Toyota's infamous specialty oil filter wrench. And you can see, well, let me reposition the camera so you can see a little bit better. Okay. See the filter housing. Okay. Has two, has three little notches here. You can see, or tabs rather. And this filter wrench or socket attachment here has three little notches that will fit into that and lock in place. Let me set this camera down now. Hopefully you can see a little bit. There we go. Now I've got it set up in there. You can kind of see how it's notched in here really really well and so that's going to allow a good bit of torque on this filter housing
And this housing, a lot, the cap that I'm removing is plastic. The rest of the housing is metal. So you always seem to get, it always seems like it's tighter than it is. Turn it upside down, let the oil, much oil as it can drain out of that for a minute. Put the filter on, it slides. Okay, I get this in the camera a little bit. Filter slides in. Cap, you push down, you hear a click. Filter is in. That's all you've got to do. That's, again, because it's plastic, it's going to get a little bit snug. So, back to the This doesn't need to be crazy tight, but it needs to be good and snug. Just enough to let that O-ring do its job. There you go. That's all you need. And just like with the other, just like with the other O-ring, you're going to want to get a little oil on this. It goes back on the cap. Cover, it just lifts right off. Set it out of the way. Gives you access to your fill area over here. We're gonna take your fill cap off, put a funnel in because a funnel is really going to help you keep from making a mess here. This thing holds over six quarts of oil. This jug is five quarts. So we're gonna go ahead and dump this whole jug in. Like it wants to drain very fast, does it? I don't know if you can hear our cat in the background, Peanut. Peanut's job, in case you're wondering, is to keep mice and snakes out of this garage. That's Peanut's job. I don't know if Peanut likes her job, but that's her job. And um, Sometimes you have to do jobs you don't like. So, that's Peanut's job. Get a little more oil uh, over a quart in it. So we'll I'll put All right. let's see how that does. Um, let that drain in there. Then we'll crank it up, let it filter through the, let the oil run through the filter, fill it up, check the level, and adjust as we need to. All right, I let it run for a minute. And it's off, let's see what the oil level's like. Probably gonna need a little bit more, but not much. Yeah. About a half a quart, I believe. Uh, let 
let's go check level again. Sometimes it's hard to see the level on here because the oil is so lightly colored. Um, you're not really looking for color then, you're kind of looking for just wetness on the, on the dipstick. Oh yeah, that's spot on. Spot on, folks. So let's uh, this buttoned up. All right, now if you're one of these guys that likes to keep everything clean up here, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of one of them, now's an opportunity to do that. Don't forget to put your fill cap on first before you start throwing dust around here. Oh my God, just did. Good opportunity to kind of keep all this stuff down. in place there like that click there we go you can wipe get that up put wipe down if you want to now do you want to keep everything running good you want to keep everything looking good all right folks we are all done with the service here on the forerunner we completed the rear differential fluid change the transfer case fluid change, the front differential fluid change, and we also changed the oil. All that with the camera and all, moving that around, getting that set up, took about two and a half hours. If I didn't have to worry about the camera, I probably could have got this done in about an hour, hour and a half. It's a piece of cake. If you're intimidated by doing this kind of stuff, please don't. Get out, work on your own car, get some satisfaction for doing your own work. Plus, it saves you a ton of money. I'll probably have about $150 in this in materials. You take this thing to the dealership, it's going to be a $750, if not more, closer to $1,000 service for what we just did here in, a, in two hours, two, two and a half hours with camera time. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please check the like button. Uh, also, if you could, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of any videos that I have coming out. And I do have a video coming out really, really soon on uh, a review of a rooftop tent. So you want to keep tuned for that. And if you have any suggestions of what you think you might want me to review or things you might want me to do or places to go, then put those comments down below and I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. And uh, any other questions, again, put it in the comments. I appreciate you watching sincerely. And uh, this is Bill from Blue Lot Off-Road and we'll see you on the trail.